Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a long review because I am going to review four books in this series. The series is the Groswell Quartet. The Groswell Quartet, Quartet came out a few years ago and was written by the name Catherine Swartz. But for the last two or three years, I have been reading books from Bookature, that UK publisher, by the name, author's name, Kate Hewitt. So when Bookature signed Kate Hewitt, they started pulling in some of her older titles. So a few months ago, I read a bunch of her older titles and did a series review. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. <laughs> now... There's four books, as mentioned, it's a quartet. And the first book, just in case you've read these from old, was called The Vicar's Wife. And remember I said there was two things. The second thing is I'm going to be looking down at my iPad because I don't want to mix up any of these stories. But they all are very, very worthy stories. So I just want to show you the cover for The Vicar's Wife. I don't know if I can get a big copy of it. Let me see. Okay, so that's the cover to The Vicar's Wife, like I said, written under the name Catherine Schwartz. So it's at this point in the video that I will put in my screenshot for the book that we're talking about now with the title, The Wife's Promise. So hopefully I didn't confuse you or bore you, but please stay for the ride because you're going to find that each and every one of these books were very worthy reads. Now, they're all connected in some way because, you know, it's a quartet, it's a series, okay? It's not a trilogy, it's not a duology, it's a quartet. And I loved it. Now, in our first, oh, by the way, each book is now and then, okay? In the then, in the series, as it progresses, it starts in England, 1939. And as I talk about each book, we'll talk about how the years progress. And then we have now. And as we have now, like I said, each story connects to pretty much the first story. So story two connects to story one, story three connects to story one, and therefore story four connects to story one. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now first book we have is a book that goes back, like I said, to 1939 England, and we have Alice who married a vicar named David. Now, Alice and David tried to have children or wanted to have children, but it didn't happen. More than that, David, even though he was a vicar, went off to war to be a chaplain at the, in the war. So now Catherine, excuse me, Alice is all alone. And she gets the opportunity to take in a child, okay? And when she takes in the child, there just may be the opportunity for her heart to be filled with the desire to be a mother. Okay, that's in 1939. But what about now? Now is Jane and her family... They moved into this coastal village of Goswell where her husband grew up. However, before they moved into Goswell, Jane and her husband and children were living in New York City in the U.S. Goswell's in the U.K. Jane was a very busy, busy, busy woman, successful, and it was mostly kind of like committees, volunteer, whatever. But she was, she was, things were great. But her husband got a job opportunity back in his home town, in village in the UK. So of course she followed her husband with her children to the UK. But Jane was never happy. It took her time to settle in. Now, while she's settling in, she finds something in her pantry. And this thing that she found in her pantry was a note, a note that was written way back during the Second World War by a woman named Alice. Remember we talked about Alice, who married the vicar, who lost children while pregnant, 
Rebecca goes off to the war. Her husband, David, goes off to the war. And now she has a child in with her. So what Jane decides to do is to try to get to the mystery of this note that she found in her pantry and to learn who this woman named Alice was. So we see two stories. We see Alice and what she went through with her marriage to David and the tragedies that she bore. And then we see Jane and what she is coping with now, even though decades separated them. Okay, so I felt like I was really pulled into the story. And I was pulled into the story for numerous reasons. Number one, I love Kate Hewitt. Number two, I love series. And number three, I, I love anything to do with World War II. And number four, I love dual timeline stories. So for all of those reasons, Kate Hewitt's first book that was released under a new name, The Wife's Promise, was an excellent, excellent read. Really, really, really good read. And I loved... The honesty behind both women, how Alice dealt with disappointment, but how Jane dealt with unhappiness with her change in circumstances and in country. I mean, like, for example, when she moved to the UK, David was supporting the family. So Jane's big career in New York City was gone. And now she's got to find her footing in the UK. And then Jane had two children and she had to be a mother to these children all while her heart was still in the in the in the US. Very, very good story. That's all I'll say about it because like I said, I've got to do four books in this video. So I want to move on to the next book and hopefully I can bring it up it while without stopping the phone, but let's see if we can. Now book number two was, and like I showed you before, I'm going to show you the cover. Let's, let's do that. So book number two was previously titled The Lost Garden. Okay. But now that I got my hands on the book, I'm reading it as The Daughter's Garden, book two in the Goswell Quartet. Okay, now, of course, our characters change. And even our time period changes. Of course, we have now the present. But instead of World War Two, we go back to England, World War One, because now the world World War One had ended in its 1918 England. And when we have our characters we have in the past, we have Eleanor, okay? And then in the present, we have Marin. And in Eleanor's case, she suffered great loss in World War I because her brother was killed just before the war was called to an end. And she feels that she'll never recover and but there was something special about the garden that was behind their home and her father hired somebody named jack to restore this garden so as the garden is being restored eleanor begins to heal and if jack plays into her healing then all the better but what about later because if that was 1918 and now it's 2022 what does that have to do with the past and the present connecting? Well, Marin, like I said, is our character of now. Now, Marin has just become guardian to her 15-year-old half-sister, Rebecca. Okay, their parents, which is her, their, share, their father, they had different mothers. Rebecca's parents were killed in a car accident. Now, when Marin was born, at some point, her father left and she never had a relationship with her father. And then later he remarried and he had Rebecca. 
But because Marin had no relationship or very, very little relationship with her father, her and Rebecca were pretty much strangers, okay? But now Marin has to care for Rebecca and they are living very close to Jane. Remember we met Jane in book one? And Marin is trying to help Rebecca through her grief, but the way that Rebecca and Marin come through this shared loss of their father, although Marin had no relationship with him, has to do with that garden. Remember that garden that Jane found that that was in the first book? And, and now it's later. Well, we find out that Jane from book one and Marin in this second book are living fairly close in location. And there's a secret that is found in this garden. And for reasons that you'll find if you read this book, Marin gets help from Jane to unravel these secrets of the past. So this book, we learn about how Eleanor found hope and how Marin and Rebecca came together and how Marin, with the help of Jane, solved those secrets of the past. And that is book two. And I'm not giving you full, full reviews because obviously the video is already 12 minutes. I'm trying to keep my cat from jumping up here. But I'm trying to whet your appetite so that you'll check out these books because they were so, so good. Now we move on to book number three, which is The Bride's Sister. So just like I've been showing you, I want to show you the cover for the original book, which was called The Second Bride, written under the name Catherine Schwartz. Nope. No, sorry. I'm trying to keep my cat down. So... That was back in 2017, so now it's been republished as The Bride Sister, and I'm popping that cover up now. Now, just like in book two, where Marin became guardian of her sister Rebecca, we have someone here named Sarah who has become guardian to her little sister Lucy. But the thing is, oh my goodness, I think this might have been one of the most effective books in this quartet. Because in this book here, it's 1868 England. Remember, we started off in 1939. Then we went back to 1918. But now we're going back to 1898. Sarah was very protective of Lucy. Lucy befell a tragedy or a tragedy befell Lucy. And she's, I think, 10 years old in the book. And she is mute. And Sarah will do anything to protect Lucy. However, they something happens in their life lives that makes them destitute, orphaned even. And the only choice that Sarah has is to marry this widower named James Mill. James Mills. D marrying James Mills will keep them from the workhouse, from the streets, give them a home. However, oh boy, James was not a kind man. And poor little Lucy suffered. But not only Lucy suffered, Sarah suffered. And then something happened. Remember, Sarah's trying to keep Lucy out of the workhouse. But that's the past. A past in a book that really affected me. But we're also talking about the present. Because each book in this quartet goes from past to present. So what's happening now in Goswell? Well, now we have Ellen and we have another teen and this is her stepdaughter, Annabelle, 
who moves in and Annabelle is anything but cooperative. Now, Alan has a daughter and Annabelle is her stepdaughter. And the the one thing about Alan is in the home that they're living in, she had just set up a nice little room, like for an office, her own space in, in her home. But when her husband gets a call that his ex-wife is moving to the U.S. He wants his daughter to finish her last year of school there in the U.K. So she's going to move in. So she takes Ellen's space. So there's a conflict there. The other conflict between Ellen and Annabelle is Annabelle is anything but kind. She is bitter. Okay. This story, the reason I said it might have been the most effective of the quartet is there's a very serious thing that happens that is happening in the story with Annabelle, but also in this story with Ellen's daughter. Heartbreaking even. Very, very, very heartbreaking. But Ellen finds something which is a death certificate in their home. And that's that death certificate brings them back to the 1800s, to the lives of Sarah and Lucy. And so Ellen starts to investigate this. And this kind of is the tie that brings her and Annabelle together, but not without great difficulty. Our character Jane from book one proves instrumental when it comes to researching this death certificate and to find out what happened to Sarah and to little Lucy. Now, the book was 400 pages. I did want to check on the length. And the reason I wanted to look down and see what the length of, the, the length of this book was is Sarah and Lucy's stories were tragic. Ellen and Annabelle's stories, story was difficult. But then there was the additional drama that went on in that home between Annabelle and Sarah's young daughter. And that's why the length of this book worked, because it couldn't be rushed. These stories couldn't be rushed. So this book will be out in a couple of days, so you won't see the video until the day of release. But let me tell you, I was really pulled into the first book, I was really pulled into the second book, but this book broke my heart. It really did. But as moving as this book was, it didn't leave us with disappointment. It didn't. It was excellent. An excellent, excellent read. Then we move on to the last book in this trilogy, The Widow's Secret. Now, it was called The Widow's Secret by Catherine Sports, and I'll show you that cover. Okay. So that title didn't change, but now it's, and that was again, 20, oh, this was in 2020, but now it's again released in 2022 as The Widow's Secret by Kate Hewitt. And that cover will come up right now. Okay. So I love how this book keeps moving us back, back, back. So let's review the years, 1939, 1918, 1898. Now it is 1776. No, 1766. This book, okay, book three was emotional. Book four kind of made me a little bit angry, but it's not Kate Hewitt's fault. It's history's fault, okay? It's what happened in history. And as a black woman, I'm very affected by what happened in this book, okay? So, well done though. Book was a very, very well done. Very, very, very worthy read. So let's talk about it. We have Abigail who's married to James and he's a, t a tobacco trader. 
and his business isn't making him the money that he wanted. So he takes the opportunity to run a, like, I don't know what you call it, but his next endeavor for his, his shipping business would take him away for like a year. But Abigail's not left alone. James leaves her with a little girl. And I'm going to just say it, okay? A little black girl. But it's 1766. Remember I said that this book kind of made me a little angry? Not the author's fault, but the subject matter. See, James captained a ship to Africa and the Americas. And as it turns out, he was a slave trader. So the little girl that comes in to Abigail's life was a slave, ripped from her family. And some of the uh, people in Abigail's household, most notably her housekeeper, hated the little girl on sight. But Abigail wasn't like that. She looked at this little girl with fondness. And she gave this little girl everything, everything, everything she could give her. But what she could take away was the prejudices that were so strong at that time. More than that, Abigail begins to wonder about James. What was he doing? Was he truly trading tobacco as he told her? Or was he actually trading human lives? Was he snatching people away from their families and becoming a big part of the slave trade? And I just, I personally suffer greatly when I read anything about slavery. I just do. But let's talk about the present though, okay? In the present, we have Rachel who is called in because a ship was discovered, a shipwreck, and she's an expert and she's brought in to investigate this shipwreck. Now, Rachel's married to a chef, but she's not really happy and she doesn't know why she's not happy. So this distraction of this ship should be good enough for her to deal, to not deal with her difficult marriage back at home. Rachel discovers that this was a slave ship. That very same ship that Abigail's husband James captain back in the 1700s. So we the reader know for certain that James was a slave trader or became a slave trader. But now we have to see, or we do see how Abigail's relationship with the little girl brought into her home, how that worked out. And we see some of the tragedies that befell them because of the life that James led, the secret life that James led. While Abigail thought she truly loved her husband, she thought he was a good man. But then we see how extraordinary Abigail's story was and what Rachel does to find whatever answers about that shipwreck that, cause she was, I forgot what her job was, but she was like a researcher, uh, very, very, very uh, prominent in her career, whatever it was, and I'm drawing a blank on that. But she was an expert and now she is trying to see more about this, the history behind the ship. And who does she meet in this book? Well, she meets Jane, our person, our protagonist from the first book. So while she strikes a friendship with Jane, Rachel tries to find answers, all while knowing in the back of her mind that things with her husband back at home have to be ironed out. But what we learn about in this book about Rachel is 
well, we ask ourselves, I should say, why is Rachel so unhappy in her marriage? What was in Rachel's past? See, we're digging in to all of the past for all of these different timelines, you know, the 1700s, the 1800s, the early 1900s, World War II. But we're also dealing with our characters in the present and whatever drama is in their lives. So what was it about Rachel that made her so unhappy? And was there a chance for healing? And if there was a chance for healing for Rachel in the present, was there any chance of healing for Abigail in the past, especially considering the whole subject of slavery? So I'm going to reiterate this a third time. My feelings about slavery are well founded, but our author Kate Hewitt did a fabulous job with this fourth book in the quartet. This fourth book in the quartet brought it to a close and was done exceptionally well. It really was. It really, really was. And why it was called The Widow's Secret, quite naturally, is because Abigail had to learn who her husband really was. And last thing I'll say is I loved the relationship she had with the little girl. I did. And that made this book redeem itself quite well. So that is all four books in the Goswell Quartet. I'm sure this video is at least 20 minutes. And I do apologize for that. But I didn't want to break it up. I did not want to break this video up. I did break it up in the recording of the video, but I uh, reviews, but I am going to thread it all together. But I just wanted to say, what did I want to say? I'm just trying to see if it's on Amazon. Yes, you can get it on Kindle Unlimited. I just want to check so you can get all four of these books. But look for these books as you see the book covers on the screen under the name Kate Hewitt, not Katherine Schwartz. So hopefully you enjoyed this long review. And I want to thank you for watching. Bye-bye.